Welcome back to another Tinkercad tutorial and today we're going to take what we've learned about the additive and subtractive method and we're going to go ahead and create an anchor. Now once you create your 3D design make sure you go ahead and give it a new name. You'll notice that I've called mine STMS Anchor because we're going to add a little text to this once we get to the end of the tutorial. After you've named your file let's go down and select edit grid and we're going to make sure we change our units from millimeters over to inches. Once you've changed your units to inches go ahead and select update grid. The next thing we're going to go ahead and do is create the bottom portion of our anchor, which is an arc. Now in Tinkercad, we don't have an arc tool, but we do have what we call our tube. And we can modify that tube to make that bottom arc. So go ahead and bring that tube into your workspace. And from there, we're going to change some of the properties. Let's go ahead and change that property of radius from a half inch to one inch. And we're going to give this a wall thickness of a quarter inch. Go ahead and select OK. Once you have those properties set, we're going to go ahead and take a look at this from the top view. Select your tube again, and we're going to go ahead and position it so it's right in the middle of our screen. Now that we have that, we need to go ahead and remove this top portion. So we're going to go ahead and use a striped box in order to remove that top portion of the ring. Go ahead and drag that box in, and then we're going to use that bottom square to extend it so it covers the entire top portion of that ring. Now, once you have that covered, go ahead and highlight both shapes, and we're going to go up here and select group. Once you select group, you're going to notice that the top portion of that ring is removed. Now that we have that, we're ready to go ahead and create the center post to our anchor. So in order to create that center post, we're going to go ahead and click in that workspace, and then from there, we're going to go ahead and drag that box in. Once we have the box into our workspace, we're going to go ahead and change our dimensions here. We're going to go ahead and bring this and give this a thickness of a quarter of an inch. And we're going to change the depth of this to be one and a half inches. Once you have your measurements set, go ahead and use your arrow keys to position that in the middle of the ring. And we want to make sure we bring that down so that it is overlapping that bottom curve. Once you have that in place, go ahead and rotate your shape and you'll notice that the height is a little off. So let's go ahead and click on that rectangle again and we're going to change the height of this all the way down to 3 eighths of an inch. Once you get to that 3 eighths of an inch, go ahead and rotate again and you'll notice that the anchor is still a little bit taller than our rectangle. Go ahead and click on that actual arc and we're going to drop that down so that it matches at 3 eighths of an inch. Now that we have both shapes that have identical heights, we're going to go back to our home view, select both shapes and make sure we group them together. Now that they're grouped together, we can go and create the crossbar that extends across the top of that center post. We'll go ahead and use another box feature here. And for this, we're going to go ahead and make sure that the width is one inch, but we're going to go ahead and change our depth so that it is sitting at an eighth of an inch. Once you have that, go ahead and rotate it slightly. Let's go ahead and change that height dimension so that it matches at three eighths of an inch. From there, go back to your top view, and we're going to use our arrow keys to go ahead and center that on that center post. Again, make sure that that crossbar is slightly overlapping. Now that we have that in place, we can simply go ahead and highlight all of our shapes and select group. The next part of this is going to be create a little eyelet for our chain to attach. So we're going to need to scroll down and we're going to bring in another tube. Once we bring that tube in, we're going to need to go ahead and change the radius. Let's go ahead and change that radius to 0.25. And we're going to go ahead and change the wall thickness to a 0.05. Now that we have that eyelet, we're going to want to make sure we rotate slightly. Let's go ahead and zoom in. And we're going to change the height and make sure that we're at 3 eighths of an inch. So go ahead and drag him down. Once you get that 3 eighths of an inch, go ahead back to your top view. And using your arrow keys, go ahead and bring him down. Make sure that he is overlapping quite a bit. And as we go through this, we'll notice that that part will be removed once we go ahead and select group. Now that we have most of our anchor done, the next thing we're going to do is add a couple triangles here. The triangles are identified as a roof feature in Tinkercad. So we're going to go ahead and grab that roof feature and bring it in. Now one of the first things we're going to need to do with this is we're going to need to turn it on its end. So we're going to go ahead and select that and using this rotation feature, we're going to go ahead and rotate that until we get to 90 degrees. Now, once you're at 90 degrees, you're going to notice that if we zoom out here and select our right view, that this is actually extending below the base. 
we're going to need to raise that up a little bit. So we're going to click on that black triangle and raise it up until we see that zero in the bottom right hand corner. Now that we have that, we can go ahead and adjust the height of this and we're going to drop that down until we get to that three eighths of an inch. Now from there, let's go ahead and take a look and let's change the width of this. So again, go ahead from your top view, click on that, and we're going to go ahead and bring that in until we get to a quarter of an inch. Once we get to that quarter of an inch, we're going to go ahead and adjust the top as well. And we could always go ahead and adjust this if we want to a little bit later. Right now, you're going to notice that if we sit this right on top, it should be close to about the same size. But if we want to go back and adjust that, we can. So let's go back and give this a little bit more width and depth. So let's change that to a half inch by half inch. And that's going to make that stand out just a little bit more on our anchor. So now that we have that, we're going to want to go ahead and duplicate that two more times. So go ahead and select your object, select duplicate and go ahead and use your arrow keys to move it. We'll go ahead and select duplicate one more time here. And we're going to go ahead and put that one off to the right side. Now that we have that, we're going to go ahead and need to rotate this again. So let's go ahead and select our roof. Let's bring them over a little bit and we're going to go down. And what we're going to need to do is rotate this. And let's go ahead and say right about 45 degrees for now. We can always adjust this if we need to. If we zoom in a little bit, you're going to notice that we want that to really kind of be covering that corner. So there we go. We have him covering that piece and we want to kind of mimic that on our other one as well. So let's go ahead and grab him and let's rotate him around so that we have our 45 degrees. And once we get there, we can go ahead and put him in place just like our other one. So get him down right in line and let's move him over. Now that we have both of those guys in place, we need to move our bottom section here. And we're going to do that by rotating or flipping this guy around 180 degrees. Let's go ahead and grab this bottom guy, maybe make it a little bit easier there. Once we get to that 180 degrees, we can then go ahead and put him right into place. Let's go to that top view using those arrow keys. Let's get him centered with that center post and bring him up just a little bit. And from there, we can go ahead and click in our workspace. Let's go highlight all of our shapes and go ahead and select group. Now that we are grouped, we have our anchor. If we need to change something, Maybe this bottom triangle doesn't look just right. We can always select our shape and go back and select ungroup. Once we ungroup those, those parts become independent of one another. So let's take a look at this bottom triangle and maybe we want to bring him out just a little bit more. So let's go ahead and change him out, make him a little bit larger, go ahead and slide him over, maybe bring it up just a little bit and we can then go ahead and highlight and group them again. See if that looks a little bit better, not as pointy at the bottom. So I like that a little more. We'll leave it as it is. Now, the last thing we're going to look at doing is adding a little text. I'm going to go ahead and change the color of mine from orange to yellow. And then I'm going to go ahead and drag my text feature in. Once you drag your text feature in, we're going to want to go ahead and change that text to whatever you would like. I'm going to stick with STMS for right now. Now you will notice that this is a quite large uh, component to be bringing into our design. So we're gonna need to go ahead and shrink that down just a little bit. So let's go ahead and select our item. And one of the things we're gonna wanna go ahead and do is rotate this. So we're gonna need to rotate my text feature right here for about 90 degrees. And once we get it set at 90, we're gonna go ahead and place it right on the top of that anchor. That's gonna help me to look and adjust that text to see how it actually fits. So now that we have that text, we're gonna go ahead and move it up a little bit and I'm gonna place it right here on that upright. So now that I have it there, let's go ahead and adjust some of the dimensions. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that box and I'm gonna smush it in there till it kind of fits somewhat. And then I can go ahead and adjust the depth of that. Now, once you get that text right where you want it to be, go ahead and use your arrows, move it up, and place it right in the middle. If it doesn't quite fit, that's all right. Go ahead and make it a little bit larger. Whatever is going to help you to fit on that actual upright. Now that we have it there, I'm going to slide it to the right just a hair, and then I'm going to go ahead and take a look and see just how much it's standing out. Notice that my text is extending up through my anchor. That's fine. I could always go ahead and adjust that height if I want, 
Make sure when adjusting your height though, we go ahead and select that feature. This is gonna pull it down. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that down just a little bit. And then I'm gonna use that black triangle to move it up so it just comes up out of that anchor. Once you get it right where you want, go ahead and change the color if you would like. I'm gonna go ahead and change that to blue. And then I'm gonna go ahead and group these together. So notice how once I go ahead and select that anchor, I'm gonna go ahead and select group that you're gonna notice that that STMS now changed to yellow. You can change that by going simply to that solid color after selecting your shape and select multicolor. By selecting multicolor, you now have your text in a different color. So let's go ahead and take a look at this in an isometric view. And here you have an anchor that you created using both the additive and subtractive method for modeling.